Hi, AP Calculus BC students, Mr. Record here. Let's go ahead and take a look at our example four from topic 10.1, special application of a sequence. It's a bouncing ball. I'm ready to have a ball. Let's take a look. So in this question, it says that we have a basketball that is going to be tossed straight up into the air and it will reach a high point before it falls to the floor. Each time the ball bounces on the floor, it rebounds to 0.6 of its previous height. We're going to let h sub n be the high point after the nth bounce, with the initial height being 20 feet. From here, we can answer three questions. Find a recursive definition and an explicit formula for this sequence. Find the high point after the 10th bounce. And what conjecture can we make about the limit of the sequence h sub n. So first, the recursive formula. So to do the recursive formula, you remember hopefully that that consists of you identifying the first term in the sequence. And so the first term in this sequence that is called h will have a subscript of 1, and that would stand for that initial high point. And so we understand that that high point if I were to look at this from a graphical standpoint, would be something along the lines of this, right here, where we're up here at 20. So h1 is certainly 20. Now hn plus 1 is going to be how we define all subsequent terms that follow that in terms of the previous term, which is called h sub n. Knowing that the rebound factor is 0.6, all we would need to do is take that 0.6 and multiply it by any previous value. And that would give us this new height. For example, if n is equal to 1, that would help us find h2, which is 0.6 of our previous height, 20, which is 12, right? 6 tenths of 20. So that's what's going on with this, to get these subsequent terms like that. Now we move on to our explicit form. Now if you watched a previous video, I gave you a really handy formula that's going to help you figure out explicit forms of these very special geometric series and uh, geometric sequences. And that's exactly what we have here. Notice that we have this common ratio of r, 0.6 in this problem. And we have an initial height, a1, that I'm actually going to refer to as h1. So our formula says that any height at any bounce in is just simply that initial height, 20, multiply by our r, and do you remember what the exponent is? It's n minus 1. It's really important that you have the minus 1 because if n were equal to 1, it basically wipes out this 0.6 because of the power being 0, and you get that first height of 20 like you're supposed to. So we've got our explicit. Now, once you have the explicit form, finding the high point after the 10th bounce becomes fairly easy because we just simply need to take our n equal 10, n is the number of bounces, and we simply plug that in for our n. And we have n minus 1, 10 minus 1, which is 9. Now, this is not a very pretty value, and it would require a calculator, and that's really about the only calculator interface that comes into play in this problem. Now I'm not going to break my calculator out just for the purpose of multiplying these numbers. I will tell you that it's 0.2015 and a whole bunch of other stuff. So we have about 0.2. This ball is not very high after 10 bounces. It's 2 tenths of a foot. Now part C, what conjecture can we make about the limit of this sequence? Well, the sequence that you're likely going to want to look at is the explicit form. It's so much easier. In fact, it's nearly somewhat impossible 
to really work with limits with the recursive formula. You, you have to work with them very intuitively. I don't want to say it's impossible, but let's say this. If you work with the explicit form, you're going to be able to use a lot of the tools that we've already shared with you throughout your calculus journey. So this is what we're kind of looking at. What is this limit here going to be? Let this n get really large. Well, if we let that happen, we basically have a situation where the 0.6 to a very large power is going to move us in a direction that might even surprise you. For instance, what if we wrote that 0.6 as a fraction? So we could pop that 20 there, and then the 0.6 is just 3 fifths. And so we're going to let this 3 fifths have an exponent that's really large. By the time that happens, this denominator 5 is going to really take off from that 3. We're going to be getting something along the lines of this. 20 times a very large denominator that's going to overpower a pretty large numerator, but it's not going to be nearly as large as that denominator. And as n gets bigger and bigger and bigger, this denominator will just overtake that numerator drastically, and we end up getting a fraction that's basically going to equi be equivalent to zero. Even if you multiply it by 20, that's not going to change. So the conjecture that we're going to make is that the height is going to approach zero. Isn't that exactly what would happen to this ball? Now, that implies that the ball would actually stop bouncing. <laughs> and I think the laws of physics might dictate that that indeed happens. But mathematically, the way that we define this, that ball will never ever stop bouncing. It'll keep bouncing just with so minuscule heights that you really don't notice it. Hmm, that's where mathematics and physics might decide that they disagree a little bit. And if, if you're not sure, go out, take a ball, throw it up in the air 20 feet, and see for yourself. <laughs> we'll see you at the next video.